I'm sure we were doing something super punk rock. The night, but there's always room for another. That sounds, that sounds like Hearthstone, Justin. Sorry, wait. Can I? I can't hear you. Yeah, okay, you're not. You can't play. The game. Yeah, you can't, Justin. Justin, you can't play a game of Hearthstone live during the show. What was that? Uh, you can't, Justin. Justin, you can't play Hearthstone right now. All right, fine. <laughs> All right, let's go, 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 go. Oh, there it is. I held it long enough. Uh, 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 because it's Tuesday night. And that means it is go time. The show dedicated to melting your face. It's not attack bringing you the best of the worst of the internet ever since anyone cared. Live in studio, Justin Robert Young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our anthem. Yeah. <laughs> but joining us also live in studio, he has not been on in too long. And uh, in, the inter- in the intervening time, uh, he wrote and opened Doctor Strange. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, see Robert Cargill. Huzzah! Dude, it's been a, it's been a hot minute, man. I think the it's last time while. that you were on, could you say you? I think you told us. No, no. I think last time I was on, you guys, I, I, I it had been announced, but I was allowed to say yes, I'm working on it, and that's it. I think that was the last time we talked about. And then it. we yeah. then we cut the cameras, and for the next four hours, got the dish <laughs> followed by like, seriously, we're not on the air, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, well, no, I remember it was Brian wound up tapping out. And and Bryce and I just like just sweated Cargill. It's like, all right, listen, it never leaves this room. What's the coolest scene? We started in the to movie? like one thirty in the morning. Yeah, it was it was part. so yeah. late. We're like, what's the coolest <laughs> scene in the movie? And you explained the 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 scene of uh, uh of, of of a strange first going out of his body, which even you explaining it compared to what the visual insanity that it was was indeed like. It was crazy. It was great. And I got to lord it over Brian for months <laughs> until the yeah. movie came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, how did it feel? Like, what's it like the night before um, d- d- premiere? Like, how do you how do you even process that? Well, I mean, the, the whole premiere thing was just strange to begin with. You know, it was just a very strange, you know, my wife and I got a, a hotel uh, right across the street from uh, Man's Chinese Theater. It was a great hotel. Um uh, it, I used it as an excuse to hang out with everybody that's always like, hey, dude, if you're ever in town, let's get together. So literally every lunch or dinner was hanging out with old friends. And uh, and then you have the run up where it's uh, we had uh, um, uh, one of my closest friends in the world. Um, we got it. We got to get her on the show at some point. Uh, Megan McCain. Oh, my God. Um, she would be great. She's oh, she's amazing. She's l- like literally we just she and I sit around and drink and talk life stuff all the time. And, and she's one of my favorite people in the world. And so she having lived in out in. LA and done TV out there knows a whole host of of makeup and hair people so she's like hey let me put you into uh, I I actually know her her uh her hairstylist Joshy and then uh <laughs> he's Joshy um and uh, he certainly is I have uh I have gotten drunk with that man several times he's a wonderful human being and uh he got us he hooked us up with a makeup person and so someone came out and did my wife's hair and makeup he did my hair and um you know, we get that all done in the hotel room and then go down like looking like a million bucks. Dude. So to get in a car, this is the crazy part, to get in a car and be driven around the block, which takes 15 minutes in L.A. traffic, to get back into in front of the hotel where we just were so that we could pull in behind the security gate to walk the red carpet. and Because <laughs> uh, you don't want to be the asshole. <laughs> like, just, just walking down like, hey, uh, I, it, it's, it's, it's me. I wrote it. Um, can yeah. I, can no, I, no, they, don't, they don't fucking know. But when, when the black clear black cars pulls in they're like yes you can come in and then you have somebody waiting for you and they're that person is with you like glue for 30 minutes walking you through in, they're like this is who you're talking to now this is who this is this is who this is and um and it was this really great surreal point where you know uh it, where it's just like for 10 minutes just like what the hell's going on and then all my friends start showing up yeah and like not just my friends but my friends who are like from other elements of the yeah. industry where my like, friends from the tv <laughs> <laughs> no 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 like you know like like, okay, so uh, I got my start on Ain't It Cool News like yes. 15 years ago. Yes. Another guy who was writing on and off for Ain't It Cool News for the time was uh, a little guy named Patton Oswalt. Oh, and, wow. And Patton Oswalt was writing under the name Neil Cumston. And so 
he had an open invitation for any of the Ain't It Cool guys when he was, whenever he was in town to get tickets to any of his shows and then come hang backstage. And so I've met and drank with him a couple of times after after his shows. Um, and so, you know, it's like- Is that I, public knowledge? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it, it got broke. It, it got broken like eight years ago. I don't uh, know publicly. who would care about that, but like you know, like a, a, a set of a few thousand film nerds. And if but you've I never read, if you've never read his Neil Cumston reviews, they're amazing. He wrote my favorite critical line of all time, which was of Return of the King, where he said this movie is unbelievably amazing, except for all the parts in the elves, which are like twenty minutes in a candle shop with your girlfriend. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and to this day, that line still makes me laugh. Uh, but yeah, but so he was there. We ran into each other on the red carpet, and that was really weird. And so it's like, oh, holy shit. Other people I know are here. Holy fuck! And so it just becomes surreal, and um, and then and it's, it's partly it's because like, it's your party. It's not like you're just there at a big Hollywood function. There's a big Hollywood function that well, you help well, cause. It's your baby that's being show off. Right? You know, you know what it's exactly like. You'll understand. You wouldn't. Um, <laughs> uh, it's like Hot your, takes. It's like your wedding night. Uh, it's, hey, he got married. When were you married? <laughs> He only, he only did an entire podcast leading up to <laughs> and he got married no, fine. in epic fashion. I remember, you had a, I remember you had a fiance and then I no, never heard you know, from her you know, again, so right. I imagine she was right. like no, dumped no, no, in a no, lake no, somewhere. Cargill's like, the point still stands. That's you right, exactly. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Your cold black heart could never understand <laughs> the complex human emotion of marriage. <laughs> you would probably turn it into something cold and callous, like a podcast leading up to a scripted performance. See, I, Shame. I, Okay, you. it is it has successfully worked. I've I've found some of the spilios in chat who are uh, calling out my name dropping. Oh yeah, is... of course, of course, classic. Uh, so okay, so the, uh, this no, is no, my... yeah, so, but but to finish that point, it's, oh, yeah. it's it's like the night you get married. Like it's literally like you spend all this time prepping for it. Yeah, you're prepared for it. You just kind of you get to the point where you're like, I just want this to be over because I just want it to be out there so everyone will stop asking me about it. So yep. it can be like in yep. the world. All, all you're thinking is is don't trip on the dance floor. Don't just, trip on just the dance floor. Get through this right. And, you blink and all of a sudden it's over and it's like six hours later and you're standing out front of the magic castle and you're like, oh my God, my head is full of memories and I don't know how they got here. So, like it is, it is uh, surreal. It, it's the recall, total recall. You just blink <laughs> and you're there. So so during the actual performance, this is my own neurosis here, is how, like, you are obviously very, very intimately familiar. You wrote the, wrote the thing and I assume you'd seen a complete cut by this point. No, no, I had not. <gasps> oh, you had? Oh. No, no, this was my first time seeing the complete cut because Scott was very much like... Scott was like, yeah, of course you can come out and watch the movie, but I kind of want you to see it with full effects at this point. So would you mind waiting? And I was like, you oh, know so what? so you're wrapping your own present at this point. Yeah, right? yeah. At this point, it was like I could have gone out a couple weeks before or a couple months before and watched the movie. But Scott was just like, I really, I, it's right where we want it to be now. It's just all about the effects, and you should really see it with uh, uh, Stefan's effects. And uh, Yeah, and so because my question was, are you able to lose yourself in the movie, or are you just paying attention to, you know, counting, like, good response? Response, uh, you know, like like trying to gauge how everyone else is reacting. But I got to imagine, knowing you and how much you love movies, that you're all the way swept in, and then you barely notice, like, oh, they're laughing too. I guess. Well, yeah, no. In fact, the, the, what would happen is every few minutes, something, a change would have been made in editing or you know in the reshoots that I wasn't familiar with, and all of a sudden it'd pull me out and go, wait, that's not right, or oh. Wait, that scene's missing. That's kind of odd. Um, but then the rest of the time, I'm deep in it. Like I was, it just really, it, it 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 swept me up. And it was unlike any of my other movie experiences before, where I was watching the movie and I was just like, I was deep in it. And I saw it in a theater uh, three more times after that. Um, oh, at, I would at imagine various screenings. Yeah, because like with, my... uh, you walk in with a hat pulled down. No, you know, no, t-shirt no. that says "Just oh. a regular guy." Cargill, <laughs> he's, he's, he's in on a rolling float like WrestleMania. He's got a gigantic pimp hat and, and, and an embroidered sequin t-shirt that says "I know Megan McCain." <laughs> So, so the moment uh, uh, the thing happens, I assume you're very, very happy with it. Uh, and and like, when was the moment that you knew that that you had something? Because you don't get to see the reviews till the next day. Obviously, the whole world's on pins and needles. You had your night. You, I, I imagine, you start telling yourself like you. St and again, this is me, neurotic as hell. I, I would be pre-thinking like, well, no matter no matter no matter whatever else happened, I got to do this. This was great for me. Whole world can hate it, and I'll be fine with it. Uh, like, are you telling yourself that, or are you just like, I'm gonna own this? 
Well, I mean, the, the thing is, is, is I, I spent 10 years as a film critic on the internet. I spent 10 years doing stuff that I was really proud of that people would pull me aside at various places and talk to me about, that people I still run into today were fans of, that every time I posted something, I would get kicked in the balls by people. Like, you, you know, the, you're, you're always, the internet has always been full of haters. And so you become a nerd to the idea that, and and you have to you have to really get into the idea that what you're creating is for a small set of people that right. you are not going to ever make anything that everyone loves that is universally accepted. So you pick the people that are important to you, and you hope that they like them. Right. Um. And and um. You know that it's the reason why I mentioned uh, Patton earlier because Patton's one of those guys whose talent I've always you know just been madly in love with. Who's someone who who I, I feel very privileged to have been able to hang out with a couple of times and he's one of those guys who was on that short list of did he like it did he like and so right. seeing him there i was really excited for a minute and then it was like oh fuck <laughs> what if he didn't like it and, and, and that's like just it? it like there's so many critics online at who's face. You know, <laughs> go look at his face as he's smiling <laughs> yeah. yeah pass it down dan Harmon, go go see can you see Patton oswald back well there? that's the checking the phone afterwards it's like did he message me did he did, no, still no man. Did he tweet about it? Did he did, did he tweet about it yet? <laughs> did he? No, he hasn't tweeted about it yet. Oh, God. Oh, God. And that's what you worry about. You don't worry about everyone else. Like, I actually read one review. I only read one review of this movie. Yeah. Um, and what, what, what review? It was David Ehrlich's review. Um, Great job, fucko. Uh, David, <laughs> David Ehrlich. No, no, no. David Ehrlich is like the, you know, he's just one of those reigning kings of the disenfranchised film critics, like the type of guy who writes criticism that will probably, much of which will probably be read 10, 20, 30 years from now, but that most people look at and like, you don't, uh, you don't get movies. You don't understand why we love films. And he has- And who, not, who does he write for? Uh, I want to say- well, it's, it's on IndieWire.com right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, uh, he, 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 most everybody writes for a lot of places right now. Right. But he, uh, he has never liked a Marvel movie. Really? Um, wow. Until this one. Wow. And he tweeted at me, he's like, look, even I liked this one. And so I read his review. And his review was the perfect, perfect example of everything that I want out of this kind of review, where it's like, this is great, and this is great, and oh, this is so much better than uh, uh, before. And then, and hold on, hold on, yeah, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> and, and he's like, and, and well, they could have done this better, and this is kind of the Marvel you know, formula, but uh, this is the best Marvel movie ever made, and cut to the screen... B minus. <laughs> yes, that is, every, that is everything I wanted of a David Ehrlich review. I'm so happy right now. Um, I don't need to read anything more ever. And and it was just it was glorious. There are there are some outlets, and I and I love them. Uh, I would say like uh, uh, the playlist is one of them for me, where it's like they hate superhero movies so much that if they give a begrudging good review to a superhero movie i'm like all right i know that's good i yeah, know it's, yeah. i know it's got it going on so so, so, so the the, the b minus review from the curmudgeon is is the best but so what you what you end up doing when you when you make it Please anything, they get degrees you know, like, especially like movies and the like is you find your little touchstones and and the weirdest thing is i found that everybody that that works in the industry has their odd touchstones the one they never talk about mm -hmm. the people that they kind of like in like when you're drinking with them over a bar and you ask them about it they're like, okay, these are my two people. Like, I don't know why their opinion matters so much to me, but they do. Right. And and you kind of watch for those and, you know, check on Twitter and check. Yeah. Like, and they're usually people like either you know in passing, but you don't know well. Like, they, if you called them up in the afternoon, they'd be like, Cargill, why the fuck are you calling my house? Like, where'd you get this number? Like, um, but those are the, you know, those are the people that you like kind of really look for and you get it. And if you hit all of those moments, if you get all of those people and they're all into to it, you're like, okay, I don't care who dislikes it. Yeah. Like, that's, you know what, at this point, uh, I've done there, what there, I there set comes, out to do. There comes a point where your emotional tank and the people you care about most most like your work enough that you can honestly be like, eh, for everyone else. Like, eh, they didn't like it. That's fine. Yeah. You know, that's, that's yeah. it wasn't for them. You know? Yeah, and it, it also helps if you've made a movie that you're not proud of. Uh, I won't name any names, but then walking out of that movie and having your friends kind of give you that awkward look, and then you go, "It's okay, you can, <laughs> yeah. you can oh. say it, oh. you can say it." Oh. Yeah, and, wait, wait. This is the equivalent when you do a magic show and people or, or a magic special comes out on TV, and all your friends say, "This is going to be great on your demo reel. This is going to be huge for your career." <laughs> uh, what what is what is the difference between watching a movie that you 
were a part of versus being a film critic and just watching it critically. Like, like what what is the biggest difference? I guess I'm sure there's a lot of differences. Well, but. I mean, well, I, there's there's three ways to watch a movie. There's watching a movie as a film critic. There's watching a movie having been a film critic and not having to do it anymore. And then there's <laughs> watching your own movie. Uh, watching your own movie, you you it ne- it's never a real movie. It's never a real yeah. movie. Like you look, I, like even you know, there's it, it, like it's just some shit you do with your friends. To a certain extent, like the <laughs> or, Doctor or Strange, fr- Doc- friends that were assigned to you by corporate. <laughs> Doctor Strange was as close as I've gotten to having entire sections where I can watch it as a film and then be like, "Oh shit, no, I'm I, this. This was a movie. This I was a dream on. I had once. Yeah, and because the, the thing is, you always look at it and you're like, "Oh man, I wish they hadn't cut this or." Oh, I, you know, I, I that, la- that that line didn't land the way I'd hoped it had in my head. Right. Like all of that stuff, you you can't get past it. You just can't. Uh, and and so you invariably like it was only recently that I was able to sit down and watch Sinister from beginning to end and go, oh hey, you know that's a pretty good movie. I'm I'm, I'm proud that's of that. Fun. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I could see that as a movie now because every time watching it with people beforehand, like when I would go do Q and A's, I was just like, oh man. And you just see, you're just like rocking back and forth and like, all I see are the flaws. Yeah, all yeah. I see are Wait, my failures. Just, just that flaws, gap. flaws, failures, Ethan Hawke, flaws, failures. Well, and, and it's uh, like I had similar moments during uh, Hacking the System where it's like I wanted everything to be web video tight, like just bam, bam, bam. And so as a result, the pacing was never fast enough for me. But then, uh, but then you wanted you know, it to be the rock where it cuts out a second before it Yes, should. exactly. And I'm like, like faster, faster, faster. I want people to be scrubbing. But, you know, television just has a different pace than the, the web. So it wasn't until I saw it in the context of television, I'm like, oh, this is cute. Oh, wait, there are commercials. That's what is important to go back and remind everyone in that in that. Why are we repeating TV ourselves? Yeah, yeah, exactly, because, right? Because they just watched five minutes of the same commercial for the general <laughs> on a loop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, now what's funny to me is that you only read the one review. But Can we talk d- about the general, though, real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't have cable, so whenever I watch cable at someone else's house, that's what astounds me the most. I was, it is 2017. <laughs> I can do this shit on my computer. I know, is this really one, a big it's thing? like 92 level CGI. <laughs> got, but then also they keep putting the general in like weirder, more like a feminine situation. Is, is, it, uh, is it like Shaq in it now or something like that? Like, no. I, I want to. This episode brought to you by <laughs> the general. Cha-ching. Uh, wait, uh, yeah. Oh my God! He is! <laughs> they got. Oh, Shaq's <laughs> hard up for cash. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. In context with Shaq, the general is actually much bigger than I thought he was. <laughs> he yeah. was, yeah. <laughs> like Dude, he's taller. Like, than that's us. as tall as I am next to Shaq. Yeah, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Only my head's a little bigger. They should have at least pl- placed him on a box or something. Uh, you know, if you need car insurance and save some time. So I remember this time that I was out drinking with the general. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those names, uh, dude. So uh, they're gonna drop themselves. So so <laughs> it's funny. Dude, and by the way, that is that was the first hurdle. Like before we ever met in person, I just knew you as the guy who always was talking about the you know the the, the name drop or whatever. And and it, 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 it takes a while for your sincerity to come through. You're you're an acquired taste. You know, it's it, it really. <laughs> well, it's it's like Pat Oswalt says. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your good friend. Yeah, oh, my, good, my good too, friend <laughs> Pat Oswalt, the guy who I've met. By the way, you said. know that he was making a joke because he said Pat Oswalt and not just Pat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but as 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 Patton actually says, uh, I'm in this for two reasons: the money and the story. Um, and you know you, you get to do cool things you kind of want to share those stories with people sure. they bring you on their show to fucking tell stories you tell stories the stories involve names All right, you names know what? are famous I people I don't want to brag names that have gravity that need to be dropped I don't want to brag need to be dropped to the loud thud <laughs> I don't, I don't want, want to brag, but I got some stories, kids. Uh, well, we got- Just sit back and get me another beer, and Cargo will learn you some good shit. So, so when Doctor Strange happened, you brought Jason Murphy out, and so we had him I on did. the show, and it was just an hour of us gushing in the reflected glory. And I don't want to brag, but a certain writer of Doctor Strange watched the whole episode. <laughs> a certain writer of Doctor Strange did watch that whole uh, episode. I'll, I'll tell you, before we get into this, this is a whole other jag. Yeah, Fucko. Yeah, we, 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 we do need to get into. Uh, you brought... A gift uh, uh, to to us on this show. This is uh, can we can we bring it out here? Do we want? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why yeah. we're not drinking it now? I know is that's astounding. that's why. Like the fact that we've gotten this far into the show and haven't started drinking it is insane. This is Premier Malt Single Cask Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged eighteen years. And by the way, you can see right here, uh, 
1988, two years after my brother who has a kid uh, was born. This is is when they when this batch was started. Was when this batch started. So so we are going right. to. Uh, uh, that is not a screw out. top, fucko. This is not a screw top. <laughs> so uh, uh, so we had Jason on. Yeah, and, Murphy. Uh, uh, Which, there was by the one way, moment- Murphy, Murphy, and I are best friends. Like oh, yeah. he is, he is literally. We are, uh, you know, he's the guy who, when I am in my darkest yeah. moments of life, shows up with a bottle of scotch and says, "We're going to fix this." With my friend, Mr. Glenn Dude, Libet. he is, uh, he is the person that kept me sane during all of hacking the system. Like, like I, I jokingly called him my Chewbacca because, like, like I, I needed someone to lean on because I was losing my fucking mind Jason's during all the that guy. period. Right, Jason. The, he is just. He is just so fucking steady. <laughs> yep. He is a fucking yeah, rock of a human been, being. He is right. a and and man. Posts all about Android. He's great. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> wrong Jason. <laughs> wrong no, Jason. Same. Same one. Go uh, ahead. So so we uh, <laughs> we, we we get the, the the his version of the red carpet story, and we decided that it needed a a, a it needed, Stanley. It needed to make Cargill. Oh wait, let's get the Stanley part. Yeah. 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 So we decided Stanley had a had of a cameo, and his only comment was "Great job, fucko." <laughs> and then uh, and then what's what? And it became a meme for that entire episode. It oh, was. Was yeah. a terrible Stanley impression. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 I remember. But uh, uh, tell uh, tell your story of of when you saw the movie. Oh yeah, no. So it was it was. Uh, and, and Do your impression first. <laughs> as oh, I mean, uh, everybody can go see the episode for sure. <laughs> so I think that the idea was that uh, uh, Murphy was walking in late. Or, oh, no, or I'm talking about when you was, when you first your experience of first seeing no, the movie. No, I know, I know, oh, I know. God, no. I he it. was he then asked me oh, to do God, the impression, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it would be Stanley in the back row as somebody was walking in late to the screening of Doctor Strange, and as you think that you've gotten to your seat, up stands. The patriarch of all this empire, Stan Lee, to just yell, "Great job, fucko!" Uh, but then, but specifically, but specifically, uh, when you when you saw the movie, so so uh-oh. I see the movie, and uh, I, I'm thrilled by how awesome it is, and. Uh, you know, like I'm sure you understand, as you just explained, that sometimes movies are better than others at the end of the pro- at the end of the process, and and sometimes you see a thing that connects with you. Exactly. And 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 so uh, and this movie connected with you. Absolutely connected with me, and so I I wanted to send out the the, the tweet to say everybody should go see this, and and to uh, big ups uh, my buddy Cargill, and uh, immediately I'm still in the hallway of the San Francisco Alamo Draft House. When I send this thing and uh, we were getting one drink for the road, and Ashley's going to go get the get the drink. And before she comes back, I just see, and it's at Massaworm. Uh, You're welcome, fucko. <laughs> They're just all caps. And I was just like, that's it. That's the full. All you motherfuckers have not had the full Doctor Strange experience. I have just got the full Doctor Strange experience. I was so thrilled. Uh, yeah, dude, I'm so glad I went and saw it because uh, I saw it at your Q and A at the Alamo uh, up up at the Village, uh, which was a lot of fun as well. Oh yeah, but, oh uh, yeah, that was a good night too. So we we tried to uh, we tried to out you. We tried to get uh, Jason to tell tales out of school. Yeah, that, uh, he did. And, and he, and he, you're saying he he done screwed it up? Well, no, he didn't screw it up, but he told a story. And the story was a personal story. It was one of those things you asked. What you guys specifically asked is, were, did Cargill have any douchey moments <laughs> in, that were very Hollywood? Well, because it, yeah, if if there were ever a moment, wait, you got a mouse in your pocket? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. This is our personal shot glass. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bonnie just handed that to me. Oh, oh that's nice. Uh, uh, okay, here you go. Um, Always if, smell your scotch, kids. Always smell your scotch. If there were ever a moment. That you would be permitted to go full douche Hollywood. Yeah. It would be the, the the night that an obvious blockbuster that was going to do gangbuster gigantic money uh, had just unspooled in front of you and your Hollywood friends, right? But, but right. Before we get into that story, take a sip of this scotch. Okay. Just, it's really good. Like, like seriously? <laughs> like, all right. Hashtag scotch chat. Scotch chat, everybody. We're going yeah, to uh, go into scotch chat. By the way, chat. all right. Bryce just busted me. Um, I was watching the little the little play, the one act play taking place <laughs> yeah, on uh, the so, side so of that story. I, I just got busted. <laughs> what, what just happened was um, uh, I just had two big gulps of beer. And sometimes you ever have that where it's like you know you're you're, you're pacing yourself and so it's like beer's comfy, 
and I sniffed too hard oh, oh, on the scotch, oh, and I definitely oh. had a <laughs> moment, <laughs> which is not a reflection of the quality of the scotch at all. But, I was but trying to the, play that off. The priming, I was I was poorly primed for was the that experience. on camera. We oh, want to yeah. get better. We want, it, no, we no, no. We want to get better at clips. Find the clip. Find the <laughs> clip. I'll, I'll, I'll read fuckers, the clip. Uh, oh, crap. <laughs> Hold on. The one thing I thought we can't forget about. Uh, if you are in San Antonio, San Antonio on Thursday. For Thursday. Pack. Where's the best camera? Th where's, yeah, where's my camera? Right there. Right there right that there. camera. Thursday, the 26th in San Antonio. That is the first night of PAX. The, the night before. Yeah. Yeah, the night before, right? Uh, this is the Lieben Lizard Pub. We said last week it was going to be a meetup. Guess what? Now it's a show. We are going to do a show at the Lieben Lizard Pub uh, in San Antonio. That is this Thursday, two days from today, the night before PAX. Special guests, fun times, 7 p.m. Be there. I bet you can guess some of the guests that we're trying to get. Off. Hopefully, Mikey. Hopefully, Carboni. <laughs> I have been talking about it the past three weeks. Shame, <laughs> shame them personally <laughs> on Twitter right now that they are going to be at uh, the Leap and Lizard Pub, 7 p.m. Uh, that is when we are going to do our our live night attack at PAX. So All there right. we go. So back to you being a douchebag. Being a douche. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. So okay. So he then tells this story. He's like, we're walking up to the magic uh, the magic castle. Um, uh, which of course, at, in in perfect you know in perfect timing, you're like, oh, I've been there. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, no, but so we're walking up. Dude, to you have just an encyclopedic knowledge of this episode. I we're love it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're you know, and and he's like, well, and then Cargill turns to me and he says this thing, mm -hmm. and he says the line, and um, and then you guys are like, oh man, and you guys have some fun with it, but it's the end of the episode. He doesn't tell the story. And oh. and so I need to share this story because this is this this the, what what Jason failed to mention is this story this line this reference is how the moment he and I became best friends like this is what this is is um, so it goes back to about ten years ago and Jason and I knew each other through the local uh, uh, we were doing you know I was doing um, the real deal uh, the real deal and, sp and which turned into spill right right and uh, that's how I got to know him was he was friends with all the guys at the real deal right uh, as a matter of fact I think I think I was friends with them before Jason this is, this is me dropping the name probably like 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 1998 yeah. I want to say he drops okay. heavier names yeah <laughs> But no, 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 you did. In <laughs> fact, but but see, like in in full truth, the reason I'm here today as a guest is because of you, which we have talked about previously. In which, at one of those real deal things, you sat me down at the bar of Opal Divines and said, "Dude, why aren't you doing this full time?" And I said, "Well, you know, I'm working at the video store and I'm trying to make money and yada yada." And you sat me down and gave me the lecture and told me about what Bonnie did for you and yeah, how dude. Bonnie gave you one year. Yep. And you gave me the whole thing. It says one year, and if at the end of one year you can't make money doing this you put on a tie you become a manager somewhere and you get a real job right. and magic is your hobby well and 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 the nice thing about that is at least you do it without being bitter you do it without yeah. spending the rest of your life wondering what might have been you know so you gave me the whole you know go ahead and take the leap you know me and jess sat down and talked about it afterwards and she said you know what i can do that for you and so I was having a really tough, I had gotten transferred from one video store to another. They needed somebody who knew their shit. It was a store that was just in terrible shape. And I was working for this terrible manager and I just hated my life. And I'm just like, I don't want to be here anymore. And Jess is like, this is the time. Can you make a go of it this year? And it's like, wow. fuck yeah. And so I ended up then taking your advice. And I took a year off, and within six months, I was making money, and I made more money that year than I made at the video store. The next year, I made twice that. And the year after that, my third year, I was making as much as my wife was. Yep. And and I was a professional film critic. And um, which all of that led up to getting into Hollywood. Like, you know, all, that entire career built into me then becoming a which screenwriter. By, which, by the way, congratulations on, uh, <clears throat> I spoke to someone today who is saying I I'm I'm barely I'm doing corporate magic shows I want to go get popular at colleges so I could do big corporate magic shows and and it's very tempting like you pull off the impossible of getting to actual Hollywood by way of film critically because I went to colleges and ended up touring for 15 years before I got out of colleges. Uh, I, you know, still do college shows and stuff, but but you know, moving into uh, internet. And then I'm like, well, let me do internet TV to get to real TV. And then it took 10 years of internet TV to get to real TV. Like like 
a lot of people get into that one place like, hey, I write a thing and I get paid and I get money and people uh, uh, acknowledge that I exist and that feels pretty good. So I'm just going to stay there. But you did the very difficult thing of, of, of continuing to double down. Yep, and uh, and it, it worked out for me. Yep, pretty much great. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much just uh, I just been Wait, doing it. Pick up a job. Get, and... in the story, the story, the story. You You're a douche. douche. This is where this is exactly what I was. That's why I didn't make too big of a thing of that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't want to go into here's why Cargill's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Stop so trying I'm to a, bail him out. We want to, he's trying to self douche right now. He's self stitching like, on his douche. So let I'm the a, writer write, Brushwood. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a film critic at the time, and Jason, uh, you know, Murphy, uh, he he calls me up and he's like, dude, um, so there is a horror convention up outside of Dallas that I'd really like to go to. It's the first year it's happening. Um, but I can't really afford to do it myself, but I could if I shared a room with somebody. You know a bunch of the young directors who are going to be there. It's just a bunch of these guys, Adam Green, Joe Lynch. Uh, uh, well, I didn't actually know Joe Lynch at the time. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Schifrin. Um, uh, and uh, it's just all these. Well, yeah, if you're in, if you're into horror, you guys know who I'm talking about. Like, these guys are fucking sure. awesome. Sure. These guys yeah. are not mainstream dudes, but they are all fucking primo fucking human beings. Um, you hear me, ladies? If you know. <laughs> those horror names yeah, primo human <laughs> beings top shelf top shelf like an 18 year old whiskey aged another hey, nine years scotch 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 uh, all right, so, so the heart. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I could go up and hang out with these guys. Scott Weinberg's coming into town. I'll hang out with Scott. We'll have a good time at this thing. And so we go to this convention, and it's the first year of the convention. The convention isn't around anymore, uh, but it's the first year. They, they have a turf war with one of the bigger other conventions uh. that is really fucking pissed that they're there. Boo. You joke. People, people on the convention. <laughs> big, big names, big names on the convention circuit, on the horror convention circuit, are getting phone calls saying, "I see that you're going to this convention. You need to cancel." Oh, or we'll oh never have you back to ours. shit! Like you, you know, call Robert England right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know Robert. Robert England wasn't scheduled to be there. I don't know. I don't know Robert England okay. that well. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm I am I'm only his his godfather. <laughs> no, but no, like like Kane Hodder got a call though. Okay. Like Kane Hodder, you know, who is Jason in four movies and in yeah. the horror community, he's Kane fucking Hodder. Um so you know, big guys were getting calls going, you shouldn't go. And some of the guys are like, fuck it, I'm gonna go. They called me and you didn't call me this year. You know, this is my fucking job. You know, yeah. I gotta I gotta do this. So um it's under attended, so everybody's kind of bored. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's just hanging out. And so everybody who knows everybody's just kind of hanging out together. And so uh, this particular convention had gotten together all the Jasons and all the Michaels uh, at the same time. Oh, wow. So uh, and all the leather faces. So it was uh, they were all there and we're all just, you know, all the young horror, uh, you know, Turks are hanging out. And there's a couple of us film critics there like me and Scott Weinberg. And and, uh, you know, we're all hanging out and it turns into a crazy weekend in which Saturday night we end up out at this strip club owned by a member of Pantera with, you know, that is over, it's it's packed to capacity and they won't let us in. And there is Brzezarski, one of the leather faces going, no, 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 these guys are with me, they're cool, they're cool. These guys are with me, let them in, let them in. Um, and, <laughs> and so like all this whole crowd of like horror nerds fucking goes into this fucking full nude strip club that's BYOB and we're all getting... <laughs> We're all getting drunk doing, you know, just now having... taking the stage, leather tits. Let's get yeah. for leather tits. <laughs> it was a crazy, crazy, <laughs> stupid night. And so, like, Jason is along with me having this crazy, you know, adventure yeah. where all this stupid stuff. Not is one happening. of the Jasons, but Jason <laughs> Murphy. The real Jason. Yeah. The only Jason in our book. <laughs> there were several Jasons there that night. <laughs> but so so Jason, Jason is like really, you know, he's like blown away by this whole thing because he's gone to a number of conventions, but he's never been behind the rope and never hung out with everybody because, you know, everyone on the convention scene, they're just a bunch of horror loving nerds right. who make those make movies that nobody respects. And so they all just, it becomes a weird family. And so the, everybody knows everybody. And so we had this weird, crazy night. And um, 
you know, the next day we hang out with everybody and the, you know, and the, the every, as everyone's getting over their hangover and, and Tony Todd isn't stoned anymore. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like the, the haze is lifting and me and Jason get into the car uh, after the convention ends and we're just driving home and it's quiet for the first few minutes where it's just, you know, it's that silent, we just got done with a crazy adventure kind of moment. Yeah. And then it's that Jay- recharge, recharge moment. Yeah. And Jason just turns to me, he's driving, he turns and he looks at me and goes, it's all true, isn't it? Ha! And I said, what? He goes, you're always telling these crazy stories about getting into these weird adventures with these these famous people, and everybody just assumes you're full of shit, but it's all true, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it is. He goes, all of it. And I said, yeah. Yeah, uh, why would I, you know? What, what, what? With a twinkle in his eye, and, and, and doffed his Captain and, Ben. And, and, and he was like, <laughs> and, and then vanished out of the crack of the window <laughs> into no, the Texas brush. But so, so that's how, that's how he... That's, you know, that was the moment where he just, he gave me this look. He's like, holy shit, you are not full of shit. Like, everybody thinks that you're like. Some might say if you still are very quiet at midnight around Baylor, you can hear. <laughs> Leather tits to the stage. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that one time I was hanging out with Patton. <laughs> No, but you, you hear enough stories out of a friend of yours without Absolutely. them ever showing yeah. up with anyone. And, so, and, so and it's like, yeah, sure, of course you, you, you went backstage. So, so that you. line. So it's true, so, isn't so it's it? It's true, isn't it? So then we're walking up to the Magic Castle, and he's just shaking his head. He goes, man, I can't believe we're here. And I said, it's all true. He's like, what are you talking about? I don't and remember no, that. No, no, no. And he looked at me, and he gave me that look, and he's like, and so you get Freeze the- frame, credits roll. Credits <laughs> roll. Because it's the, you know, I was able to bring, because the thing is, is I was able to bring two, I was, I had two plus one, you know, an additional plus two to my, to the premiere. And Jess was like, who do you want to go? And I'm like, well, I've got a bunch of friends out in LA, but who do you pick? You know, yeah. who I- wait, I, I'll tell you what, you pick, you pick the people who are there for you when nobody else was. And, and, and that's, that's Jason Murphy. And yeah, and that was the thing. I was like, man, I would really love Jason to be there. And Jess is like, yeah, but he's not going to be able to afford to fly out. And I'm like, but I'm also really super close friends with his boss uh, who has lots <laughs> of frequent flyer miles and just flies around anywhere just for the fun of it. <laughs> I would love for Rod to be there too. Oh, that's awesome. And, and so I was like, I talked to Rod and I was like, hey, Rod, would you like to go to the Doctor Strange premiere? Could you swing frequent flyer miles to get Jason to the premiere? He goes, oh, dude, to get the premiere? <laughs> Fuck yes. T- and so- Tell we- me you kept this a secret from him. Oh, yes. And that's the, that's the story that you'll hear from him where he starts getting this text going, hey, dude, after we get back from uh, uh, from L.A., uh, we'll do this. He's like, no, 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 I'm not in L.A. I'm, I'm here right now. I'm like, no, 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 after we get back from the premiere. And he's like, why are we- Oh, God damn it. Oh, you oh, son of a bitch. Oh, that's so, oh you son so, of a bitch. Then he starts getting texts from his boss saying, by, by the way, you've got a couple days off, and I've got tickets for us to go to L.A. I've set up a hotel, and we're going to we're gonna go and uh, uh, see Doctor Strange. So so then I took Jason and Rod uh, as as my uh, my plus twos, in addition to my wife, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, and so it was, but it was it was really that kind of, like, he was, he was that first guy to go on one of those stupid adventures with me and then come back going, Holy shit! Like this yeah. is—you're not like making this up. Like this is this is your life. This is weird shit that happens in your life, and um, and so that it was that moment. And so if you go back and listen to the story where he's like, "Yeah," he looks at me and he goes, "It's all true." It's like so it's it's it sounds it's sweet when he tells it, but it's a callback to you being a real douchebag, or <laughs> like like way back when, or no, I, no, I no, the no, whole no, thing no, is no, charming. No, no. It sounded douchey then. Got it. That was yeah. his douche moment. Okay, it did have roots of him being douchey and then sweet and then douchey again. And here we go. <laughs> and it now all it's douche. All, it all <laughs> full douche. blends in to the sweetest douche of them all. See you at the party. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we do also like to pay tribute to the people who pay tribute to us, and that is uh, by uh, subscribing to our Patreon, patreon.com oh you so slash young. night attack. You look so young. Yeah. No shit, right? Uh, you know what? It's it's really interesting. You guys brought me on. On uh, You were talking about how you had, haven't had me on in a long time. I can actually track my entire career over my appearances on your various shows together. Do, do you realize yeah, right? this year is the year, uh, 2017 is when this show will outlast NSFW, I believe. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, Cord Killers just crossed it. Cord Killers is now longer running than then Frame, frame rate, rate was. It's, it's predecessor, right? And, and and NSFW so, was going for so much longer than Frame Rate. Uh, was it, was was it, it that much longer? It didn't feel like that to me. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Somebody maybe. will correct but me. Between your various shows, like I was, I was on with you guys 
in in the aughts. Oh, well, oh, as a matter of yeah, fact, for dude, no, 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 no. Uh, you probably don't even know this. You were the very first live stream co-host I ever had. Do you remember uh, uh, before B, uh, NSFW, before BB Live Show, uh, I set up my stage banners uh, and yes. and I was describing this new Scam School episode about mind control, and you kept going, mind control. I remember this. And then it started raining. Uh, we called it after school detention because it was so, what a catchy name. Put it up on Stick Am. <laughs> Uh, wow, man, that shit goes back. Wow. No, it goes way back. In fact, I remember that I remember one of these times, it may have been that time, it may have been a time immediately after that, where you're like, dude, Cargill, I gotta tell you, you gotta get on this thing. I found this new thing, it's called Twitter. And, <laughs> dude, and you gave me, you pulled it up on your big, you know, you had this big television yeah. you, that you were using as a monitor, uh, and you're like, dude, this is, this is how it's done, and you just, like, this is Twitter, and it was 2008, it was August of 2008, I was you, like, you, you know, know what? You know always just, like, like, uh, uh is amazing about it, especially meeting people that Brian has known forever is that this like if you know Brian Brushwood long <laughs> enough sooner or later he is going to pitch you on life <laughs> we do not know what the product is but he will pitch you on something and it will be very specific and he will not take no for an answer and and then like, it, will... it is it is high pressure like a like car salesman what <laughs> Do I have to say to you right now <laughs> to get you into this Twitter, Patreon, uh, that, you that know, said, podcasting, blogging? <laughs> that said, I happen to know for a fact that not only has that hard sell gotten me into my career, it did the same for Jason Murphy. Oh, shit. Um, and that, and at, remember remember you and I had a lunch one time with Jason where you and I gave him the hard press yeah. where it's like, dude, leave your job at Dell, <laughs> fucking become a writer, you're talented enough, yeah. you're good enough, stop dicking around and think thinking maybe someday do it now. And he's like, I don't know. He's like, I was kind of thinking about keeping the full-time job and then also writing a novel, getting it published, helping develop a television program, co-hosting the television program, also launching a new independent uh, internet property. Um, you know, all still while coding. <laughs> also, while reminding people that patreon.com slash night attack is how you can support <laughs> That's this how we very come show. Full circle. Uh, <laughs> folks, Go ahead, a, a nickel, a tickle, a dime for limes. Uh, it is uh, uh, what you need to, 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 to go uh, Oh, yeah, no, there. of course. And uh, uh, by the way, uh, we remind a lot of people, we know at the end of the day that hopefully we're making your um, day a little bit brighter. And if you listen to the main show but you wish we were hanging around for twice as long, if you like a little salad before your meat... <laughs> You know, like, like uh, appetizer. Like you like, like to toss salad before you. Get How can you have any like, pudding the, if you don't, don't eat your meat? Me. All right, my point is, my point is, you can have three hours point? of the program, <laughs> pre-show, post-show, and the show in between on your own personal RSS feed if you pledge a well, dollar yeah, yeah, or let, more. Let, let's just put it in in the language of what is going to happen tonight. Number one, if you're just listening to this show, then you are not getting the pre-show wherein. Uh, Bryce Neshcom Castillo oh. ate scorpion. I, I <laughs> and you are definitely not going to get the after show where, where I die. Uh, where where, where, where Bryce, this comes into play. Yeah. Where, where, where this really takes effect. Exactly. Uh, if you think I'm dropping names now, motherfuckers, I know. wait till the after show. I mean, I'll tell you <laughs> what. Drop your dollar. This time he's going to have to apologize in the New York Post. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if I might. Hijack yeah. that for a moment. I've noticed in the the uh, the chat there are a couple folks who are what we call junkions. Oh, who are, who are patreons of my weekly show? Yes, um, I have a I have a little podcast called Junk Food Cinema where me and my buddy Brian, a different Brian. See, you Jasons, different Jasons. Like Dan, once you start, yeah. you can't stop. Yeah, um, we uh, <laughs> we talk about uh, cult you go exploitation. <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about cult and exploitation films, um, and uh, we do that every week. And we have a group of people who kick into our Patreon, which helps pays uh, Brian's bills. Um, and uh, those are called Junkions, and a couple of them are here. And one of them asked me if I would do a couple of things. Uh, well, there's a couple. So first of all, I, I have to go Star Grove. Um, and most of you won't. You know what? You're you guys, right. We don't. <laughs> all right. <laughs> first of all, you guys need to have. Uh, uh, there's a little. There's a little movie you guys need in your life. Uh, um, 
uh, called, uh, and it's it's uh, Jesus motherfucker Scotch. Train pulls into Jesus. station. <laughs> <laughs> Birth of a nation. No, no, no. It's called uh, uh, Never Too Young to Die, and it cars, stars John Stamos as a guy named Stargrove who has his own theme song, and it is amazing. But so uh, so somebody just said Tango. I have to go cash, and then somebody else asked me to do this, and and this is the, will be the last of them. But this is Pandora. Well, I'll tell you what, out that's, there, what, eat your that's one bees. level we would never stoop to is rewarding patrons with no. some special segment where no. we call out their names called... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Night Attack new Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of... <laughs> Thank you so much to W. Scottis One for making a video intro for this. That's amazing. Uh, that's I great. love your fans. That's one of the, <laughs> you know what? One of the best things about coming on the show is your fans harass me about it for weeks, which is glorious. All right, I'll tell you what, never awesome. forget. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you what, forget? What? Forget what? Forget they what? Just, they forgot, never forget. Forgot, they never I, forget I, I don't remember anything. They like, never forget people, it. Like when I first showed up in the pre-show, like people kept saying this word that didn't make any sense. Yeah, it makes yeah, no, no sense. Yeah, no yeah, idea. Yeah, hey, so uh, uh, a lot of people Hulk have been Mania? noticing. <laughs> Hulkmania. I, I think that's a country in Europe. Like, was that? Was that? Stein? Is that the first lady? Hulkmania. <laughs> that's what it is. Hulkmania. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've noticed a lot of people are, are getting tricky on their patron pledges. They're they're like pledging oh, yeah. the day of the show or raising and lowering their pledge multiple times. So somebody raised their pledge uh, three times today and then lowered it back. Or it's probably, well, raised it from one cent to one dollar to uh, uh, more than a dollar. I don't want to say how much because I, I don't know if it's a trick or not. But I'm going to go all the way to somebody who did it last week. A new one dollar pledge. I don't know. What do you think he's doing right now? Uh, I think he's on a treadmill. <laughs> he's working on those splits, man. He's trying to get his marathon time in order. Star uh, Grove. I think he's, he looks like John Stamos. <laughs> in that moment, he's probably thinking to himself, Dave. Dave to George. Dave to George. Dave. Dave, Dave, have you ever have wanted, you ever the, wanted writer Dave the writer of Dr. Joe? Dave, hey, hey, hey. oh, yeah, Dave that is a sexy name. Sex We've, come, We've to come to bargain, Dave the George. I've come, George. To, I've come to bargain. Dave the George! Yeah. Dave the George! Thank you, Dave. 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 Out of curiosity, you guys have, can you pull up Never Too Young to Die theme song? <laughs> Because seriously, you guys we'll need see. this in your life. You have no idea how much you guys okay. need Stargrove <laughs> in your life. Oh God! I mean, I'm, I, uh, like okay. no, no, no. Like this is. This, All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Tailor made for your show. Okay, Stargrove. Let's see that new routine. Come on. Wait, is he a superhero? Ah, uh, he's a super spy. That right, does bounces. Uh, he's a gymnast in college whose dad is a super spy. His dad gets killed, and he takes his dad's place. This is like that Jim Cotta. Gene Simmons. What? As a transvestite supervillain. Oh, oh, hold up. This entire song is about John Stamos. Which is the name of the character? Yeah, yeah, like that was his given name? Yeah, yeah. His, the character's name is Stargrove. That's his last name. Oh god. This. Uh, now, I just love that to... also that like like half the people that they're showing aren't Stargrove. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. They're clearly like a blonde guy and whatever. Yeah, his dad is played by George Lazenby. Oh, that's amazing. As this true movie, Stargrove. This movie is so gloriously terrible. But the thing is, is he's supposed to be this great gymnast, but literally all of his scenes are him on a trampoline. Like, that's just like, <laughs> like, just, like all of his gymnast stuff is him on the trampoline doing that. What was the, what was the movie where they were trying to, um, whoa, did he just feel his 
Okay, I gotta, yeah, I gotta no. stop watching. Okay, yeah. Now he's just, he's just yeah. like, oh, dude. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> never too young to die. Never if too you busy. have never seen Never Too Young to Die, you have not quite lived because you are watching a movie that takes itself very seriously and really shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Gene Simmons plays a transvestite supervillain. Uh, John Stamos's love interest is Vanity in the film, and they literally have a five minute flirtation scene, which is one of the most awkward, terrible things you've ever seen in your life. But every once in a while, you just hear, stop. Stagro. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, you, you, you've mentioned that you've been on, I think, every incarnation of this show. Uh, I have. Even incarnations of the show that I was not on. Proto, yeah. Uh, but one of the things that we've loved to do with you is something oh. that happened today, which is the Oscar nomination. Oscar nod time. Uh, this, is, this happened years ago. Yeah. Like, years was, and years ago. Back when yeah. I was a critic, you're like, let's have Cargill on this week because the Oscars are coming out. And we can't possibly just have a conversation with someone. Let's make up a wacky game <laughs> to play with them and make them play it for over an hour straight, <laughs> whether they're comfortable with it or not. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that we have uh, uh, done was, especially with the with the foreign films and and some of the 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 lesser known well because uh, because we're 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 more plugged into cinematography or cinema than Cargill than is. Cargill is right yeah. I mean like listen uh, of course critic writer now blockbuster creator you know whatever there's a lot of names that you can use for, to describe Cargill but to get to the pulse of cinema you want real people yeah. who really put the work in like Brian and I in fact let us know tell us tell us oh we uh, don't even look at the poster here we're, we're not even gonna look at the poster yeah yeah n- name name something that got an Oscar nomination and we'll uh, uh we'll tell you all about it well, uh, let's start with the one that I'm, I'm pretty certain you guys haven't seen, Fences. Oh, Fences. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fences. That's, that's, uh, that's the reboot, the gritty reboot of uh, Picket Fences, the Tom Scare te- television show. Yeah, except this time, there ain't no fences <laughs> except for the ones in your mind. <laughs> that's right, because yeah. he's the sheriff of Mind Town, yeah. and his son is awkwardly growing up and entering uh, high school. But in Mind Town. In that high school, something's amiss. Well, because there's that big, that bully, uh, uh, Naughty Thought McGee. No, yeah. <laughs> and old Knotts. Knotts is like, uh, like, hey, you better steal from your mom's purse or else I'm going to give you a good old whopper in the face. <laughs> I thought it was an interesting choice that they digitally recreated Tom Skerritt in his role. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, There's and- a cold dead eyes and all the real fans of, of uh, Big and Fences were like, no, it's great. I wasn't brought out of the movie at all. <laughs> I, that was Right? That, are we fences, thinking of the same one? Right. Super close. <laughs> Super close. <laughs> Super close. Fences instead is the Denzel Washington film, also starring Viola Davis, which is based on a famous play, which is a a a, a decadilogy, I think is what you call it. Ten plays that all kind of tell the story of the history of America. And this one takes place, I believe, in the 50s and is all about a garbage man who is angling to get a job as uh, a driver because drivers, uh, the only drivers are white and and he's black. So he and his best friend are tossing trash on the back. And uh, this is a series of conversations over the course of uh, a long period of time in which we find out about the struggles with uh, that he's having with his son and the fact that he is uh, cheating on his wife of 18 years. I mean, but that's pretty much it. It's it pretty close. The same. It was pretty close. The I mean, mom's they, they, purse thing, they, kind of. They don't, like, they don't call it naughty thoughts. <laughs> no, they don't call it that. <laughs> and there's no CGI Tom Scarrett, but like. I mean, but it's implied. And, uh, you, it was you, implied. Read between the lines. Implied. No implied Tom Scarrett aside. CGI Tom Scarrett. This is the best acting of the year. If you are a fan of acting whatsoever, Fences is phenomenal. It is, and it is based on an incredible play. It is such a wonderful human story, and it really is one of the best two hours you will spend. Uh, it's not a film you need to see big, but when it is out in your area, you probably should see it and support it support it so that Hollywood knows to make more of these. I would love to see more of these plays uh, adapted. Um, I, I want to see think, uh, Denzel think, uh, Washington direct again. It is a wonderful film. Think- Viola, if Viola Davis doesn't get Best Supporting Actress for this, um, there it is criminal. I think like, it'll, be, it'll probably be Best Friend number one from La La Land that'll win. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. Like, literally, <laughs> no, this is a movie, Viola Davis is Best Supporting Actress, and everyone walks out of that movie going, if she doesn't get an Oscar, we're rioting. Uh, like, she's just... 
There, there is no performance this year in any film, actor or supporting, actress or supporting, that is better than Viola Davis and Fences, que- period. Question, do you think that uh, Denzel is going to beat the hot goss for, for best actor? I don't know. Uh, Denzel is really great in the movie. But Denzel is being, he is, he's not really far out of his wheelhouse. He is very much playing the alpha male that he plays in a lot of his films. Um, he's That's fantastic, which it's, it's, it's yeah. Denzel being Denzel, which is fucking great. But when, I don't know, I don't know, Gosling, I, there's a, it, it's a really, with, the thing is, is this year in cinema, it's one of those odd years where the actors are all kind of like, eh, they're not anywhere near as good as the actresses this year. The actresses outdid every, like, you get, I, I would I would give awards to four actresses this year before I give it to a single man. Yeah, but- Like, it, just because the year, the they, they had the best material and they did the best with it, uh, but- I, I would like to see Denzel get a second Oscar. Uh, Ryan Gosling is also someone who has paid his dues and, and has earned well, an I, Oscar. I, I'm assuming that I, because they wanted an Oscar, they made sure to rewrite the ending to where the garbage man realizes, you know what's great? Hollywood. And yeah. you know who are important? Actors. <laughs> and then he goes oh, and he shakes yeah. hands with a bunch of actors and says, I know I'm a garbage man. But I know you're the real hero. <laughs> There's a lot of humor to be mine there. The ending of Fences is heartbreaking. Oh, is really all right. Well, I'll all tell you right. what. How, how about you give us another movie right. that we can explain okay, what the plot I, is? I, I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. Let's. Uh, this is a test because you guys might have seen this one. Arrival. Oh, yeah. I did see it. The uh, it's the, it's the, I, 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 still, I still haven't seen it. I mean, so I it's, know. It's, it's about the landing of the starship. Hop. <laughs> Have you not seen oh, it? Oh, Hop. Okay, yeah. No, no, no. This is, of course, it's filled with beer, and uh, it's the first time the beer. So it's an alternate uh, reality where no one, everyone's like, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of a way to get through this thing called life, but I can't figure it out. Next thing you know. Right. Beer lands. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, of uh, course, there's that famous song. Oh, it's like, you don't need meat anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because Hop has arrived. And it's just pouring beer, just golden yellow liquid. like just just all over their face, face, neck, and chest. And everything, yeah. And then some gets on a bed in Moscow, <laughs> and it gets into a report. And next thing you know, like, it's just a weird... I didn't know where that was Dude, going. Dude, that dude's been I don't like... I don't like... I don't like politics in Hollywood either, but like, I don't know why they go there. Uh... Yeah, I remember it. That's, that's yeah, pretty much arrival, how it went. Arrival. Did you see it? Actually, I did. See, it's, the, the, it was pretty good. It's less fun when we, when we actually know. It's one of my favorite fucking movies of the year. Hey, down. um, yeah, I don't want to say. I, 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 it was it was a very near miss. Uh, for well, no, no, no. It, it, actually, I take it back. It was it was a hit, but but but. Uh, 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 hinty spoilers from this point. If you want to skip thirty seconds ahead, um, uh, 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 having read and loved Slaughterhouse Five. Uh, from the beginning, I sort of smelled where it was going, so it, it, yeah. it didn't really have a big surprise for me at the end. I suspect that if it was a big surprise at the end, that would have been an amazing, amazing. I, I actually moment. had read the uh, the short story that this was based on. So, oh wow! And I didn't realize this was based on it until the first act of the movie, and I was like, "Wait a second, this is Ted Chiang's story." Oh shit! I didn't realize that's what this is. Yeah. yeah. Oh fuck. I know what this is, where are they taking it, and what they do, how they adapt the short story and the changes they make are fucking brilliant. Yeah. I think this is... Uh, um, that, that, this, that Arrival seems like, like, like the bridesmaid, though, of, of, of the Oscars. Like It seems like, like that movie that everyone that, that is not going to get as rewarded as it probably should. Probably, but yeah. the thing is, is it's Children of Men all over again, which that's what Children of Men Oh my God, Men Children was. of Men yeah. was... It was a tragedy that that didn't win uh, uh, Best Picture. That was, that was the best movie I'd, I'd Well, seen. but... So, but so it's I love oh wow like Invisible children, Wife man. is thumbing down. All right, yeah, yeah, we're we're we're, 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 we're past the spoilers. Uh, how about how about we go uh, we go we go deep? We go uh, uh, can, uh can, can we can we put up the foreign films maybe? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, unless you have unless you have uh, some some deep in the rack that that you want to uh, uh, test me and Brian's knowledge about Lion. Oh God, Lion, man. You Number guys, one, have you either of you seen Lion? I have not I seen Lion. I mean, of Lion. course we have. Of we course are. we know yeah, okay. this is the gritty reboot of 
the Jim Carrey movie Liar Liar, uh, <laughs> but it's just L Y. Right. But it's it's I N apostrophe. Right, but they got together with the guys who did Hardcore Henry, so it's all it's him in the act of lying the yeah. entire time. Yeah, and it's like you just see the horrified looks on everyone's face. Yeah, and he's just like Jennifer Tilly, your tits are small. <laughs> ah, now I can't say that anymore. I'm lying now. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not the movie at all. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. What is? Wait, that's. Um, I was pretty sure that's what it was. This is uh, a movie about a guy who uh, lost his family and gets adopted by another family when he's a young child and needs to try to uh, connect, reconnect with his family and goes on a journey to try to uh, uh, find the family he lost at a train station years and years before. Man, you got a real knack pretty for making close, it sound like though. assholes. Yeah, yeah that was pretty a, close. That's, a, that's <laughs> why I was kind of like, you're like, go deep. And I was like, well, shit. Shit, I was going to go hell or high water next, but fuck. Uh, I, I didn't think you guys would see the Deb Patel movie. Did, did, uh, did, 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 Have you seen Hell or High Water? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that's the, the biopic about Hell or High Water. Yeah, oh, <laughs> so he's a mattress salesman <laughs> in Peoria. Yeah. And man, has he got it raw. Uh, His he, wife <laughs> is just cheating on him all the time. And she's like, and Hell it's, it's, I'm fucking everybody in this town. And he goes, hey, man, I'm Hell or High Water. You don't talk to me that way, <laughs> you dame. Yeah. And then he just like sits down <laughs> and cries. And cries. And then that's pretty much the movie. At the end, though, there's the big ending. Yeah. Where well, he where he sells a mattress. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but it's a big celebrity cameo yeah. from then, from Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. But he's doing this voice and everything. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, I'm Johnny Depp. <laughs> I would like to buy a mattress now. And then Rick takes the goggles off, and he's one Dave too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, uh, no, Roy, Roy, Roy too. Um, yeah, Roy uh, no, too. Hell or High Water oh. is the pseudo western with Jeff Bridges and Chris Pine, in which Chris Pine and Ben Foster have to rob a series of banks to make the money to pay off the money on their that their their family owes on land because of bad banking deals. But they run afoul of a uh, Texas marshal and his buddy, and ends up becoming a true western with one. One of the single greatest final scenes of a film in recent memory. Did, did, like, did, if you did, are a writer or want to be a writer in any way, shape, or form, you need to watch this fucking movie. Did Ben Foster get nominated? No, he should have. That's uh, that's a fucking. They crime. gave it to Jeff uh, uh, to Jeff Bridges uh, instead. <sighs> and, at, and, who, and, was, and, who was great, but his tongue with the mouth for Marvel's he's the whole great. movie. Listen, Jeff Bridges is great in this film. Ben Foster. Uh, ben Foster is the star, ben, and and like he just doesn't have a not pretty the, face. Like except Chris that Pine. he's not the star of the movie. He's just a guy out acting everybody. And, and, and but he's also the change agent in the entire film. Like he's he's yeah. the reason why everything's like. So you have keeps seen going this movie? Okay. I haven't. No, I oh. was I was talking about Hell or High Water, of course, the real movie. <laughs> the Hell or Whatever High Water. Whatever fantasy. Right. You're concocting. So, so we have to do this one. I know you guys haven't seen this. Yeah. And it's essential for the wraparound. Yeah. Um, 20th Century Women. Oh, starring. Jesus. Hold on. Starring El Fanning. <laughs> El Fanning. Ah, El Fanning. El Fanning. El Fanning. He goes, he goes I. It, well, this is a, a, a. Well, a sequel to the last El Fanning film. <laughs> well, th this, maybe the last one was about vampires. This one was about Frankensteins. Oh, yeah. And so he goes, I, El Fanning, need a woman for the times. I need a 20th century, century woman. woman. A smash cut to a uh, uh, No Scrubs uh, montage where he is uh, trying to date a bunch of different women. Uh, and. <laughs> And uh, uh, all of a sudden, he like he's just not having it. There's like the bougie one, the the the, the ghetto one, right? <laughs> it's a weird scene. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, El Fanning settles on um, chopping up several of them and reassembling them to make the perfect 20th century, century woman. woman. Yeah. So uh, lifting on on the big uh, uh, flat uh, uh, thing uh, up to the New York the, the, sky. The lightning bolt strike. The lightning bolt strikes. And then we find out. We a cameo by the Ghostbusters at that point. The Ghostbusters come out, but it's the new Ghostbusters, <laughs> right. not the old And they're one. like, oh, we're at the wrong movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, like, and it's the wrong century. <laughs> and, then they, they <laughs> and then they beam back up to the Enterprise. <laughs> yes. Uh, but of course, uh, the 20th century woman is is played by a uh, very very young uh, uh, Betty 
Davis. <laughs> <laughs> CGI, of course, <laughs> but, yeah. only, but only her CGI'd, eyes. So they can play the song. Eyes. Yeah, it's <laughs> trying real hard to yeah. follow you on yeah. that. <laughs> Chat's not like in your version of the movie, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, no, that's almost right. Except that instead, it's the story of a young boy being raised in a house where his his uh, his uh, widower mother is uh, taking on a bunch of other house guests to live in the house. And they're all working together to raise him to be a proper man because he doesn't have a real man in his life. And at the same time, uh, his best friend is Elle Fanning, who uh, he's madly in love with, but who uh, instead is denying him any sorts of sexual favors. Uh, they're not boyfriend, girlfriend, but they have all the relationship angles of it except the sex. And so he's incredibly frustrated and uh, other people are helping him work through it. And it is actually it is actually in my top ten, uh, along with Hell or High Water uh, and Arrival, of uh, of best films of this year, of films that if you if, if you you know need something to watch, you need something really good to watch. This is this is that indie that you look at the trailer and you're like, oh, this is the indie that comes out that's like this every year. This is that one you absolutely watch because it's so fucking good. Did it anybody is, get nominated in here? Uh, what? Did anybody get nominated? Uh, I don't. Uh, I'm not 100. percent I, I know that it got nominated for. Um, uh, uh, writing uh, yeah, screenplay, the screenplay right? yeah. but I don't think any of the actors. I mean, Greta Gerwig, Greta Gerwig was really fantastic. She, she, here. she was, she was the the the, the star, and then uh, was it Annette Benning is the Annette Benning also, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, is that like I said, this year in terms of of, of actors. Uh, the it was such a contentious year for actresses because this was the year that actresses got all the best roles and men played second fiddle to the women in yeah. cinema and uh, and it was just such a tight field that I uh, that I don't think any of them got nominated even though they're all the type of things uh, type of roles that in any other year would have been nominated like this is what's so great about what's happening in Hollywood right now is there there are those people who are going to say that this Oscars is a reaction to the Oscars so white campaign mm -hmm. and um, there is truth that there, people put thought into it that way but in truth this year the the people who got nominated no nobody just, there's didn't no, deserve it yeah it's right. not even that nobody didn't deserve it it's like just the roles that went to people of color and to women this year just outshined anything that went to anyone else like to to any it, you know it's just one of those things that the the roles were so great this year and the performances met the roles and it was just such a great year for cinema that anyone that's argued about representation in the past this is the proof in the pudding year this is the All right. so this so is what's real really quick here. I can imagine no universe in which these wouldn't have been the first words out of your mouth upon arriving at the house. But um, but Doctor Strange didn't get like a visual effects nod or anything, did it? It did. Um, what? Yeah, no, Stefan Coretti, uh, our our genius fucking special effects guy, who I'm pretty certain actually has an Academy Award for something else, and I know he's definitely been yeah. nominated. Yeah. Okay. So so, uh, so uh, visual writer, effects, the, deep water. See, you just said that like I like I mentioned it when I showed up. I'm like, yeah, boy, did you oh, see the nomination? Oh no, no, no. I'm this saying, is the first time we've mentioned. It. I'm saying that's the proof that I knew that couldn't have been the case because I knew that would have been the first words in your mouth. You're like, I have an Oscar nominated movie. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Deep Water Horizon, Doctor Strange, Jungle. Book, Kubo and the Two Strings and Rogue One. Uh, Kubo was really gorgeous. Jungle Book's probably going to win, but Doctor Strange to me is. Well, it, that's is, the the discussion that everyone's having. Jungle Book did an amazing, amazing job of um uh, of of making animals realistic, like digital animal. The CG looks so great in that. Well, because ninety percent of the movie, you, you got you got a bunch of animals, and acting, and then right? you got and then you've got Doctor Strange, which is the outlandish version, which is we've created special effects that didn't exist before. So it really comes down to what the special effects. Uh, uh, the, the voters uh, think is more impressive the the imagination of someone like right. Stefan Coretti or the uh, the amazing replication that we saw well, in and that, and Rogue One where yeah. where we made human beings mm -hmm. look like actual human beings. Rogue Two, the uncanniest valley of them all. <laughs> Uh, the yeah, uh, <laughs> Rogue, Rogue Two. We're never doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, my uh, invisible wife, the bi body. So the uh, uh, yeah, that was the fabulous thing about the the reimagining of the special effects. Because if yeah, if, I, and I've only read a, a few of the comic books. By the but, way, but if, if I can cut in real quick, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, Jungle Book, co-written by a fellow Austinite. Oh, right on. Yeah, very cool. So, uh, uh, so yeah, listen, I mean, if, if Jungle Book's gonna win because the acting was done with the special effects. But I will say this: Doctor Strange, uh, especially considering. 
uh, in the trailer, it kind of gave off a vibe of a lot of other movies, really deserves a ton of credit because it never in the film was something that I ever felt was necessarily evocative of well, Inception that- or, or, or these other kind of films that, like, at the initial onset, you might have thought it got the template for well, it. Like, and that was, I, I, th- that- I thought that the visual effects were so good. And the visual elements of the portals and everything were something that, like, it, it was set up. That first scene, like that pre-credit scene where uh, they're, the, the, they're stealing the thing, yada, 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 and the Ancient One comes out, did such you a great job. You can say the pages of Cogliostro. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, uh, the uh, like that was such a great little coda the, the, to the, the part- entire other like uh, to the rest of the film, and it was like such a smart way to get that out because like very often there's just the easy line of dialogue of like no, you have to do the bleep blop that does the ding dong, and that's how that looks. That it, it put it all up out front, and then everything else was was super rad about it. So uh, I think Doctor Strange uh, should win. Jungle Book probably win, but Doctor Strange should. Well, thank thank you. I'm sure Stefan appreciates that. He he really did an amazing job. Yeah. His team, he and his team, fucking geniuses. So you know, it's and it's so weird. Like they were. I, I remember sitting on set with with Stefan, and he was just talking with somebody else about their various Oscar nominations. And I'm just sitting over there going, "Oh, I'm never going to get one of those." <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. Like I'm sitting with people who talk about Oscar nominations as if it's just like <laughs> a, a, an old hat thing. Well. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let, let, let's go over. Let's go over one more movie that Brian and I can educate everybody. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, I actually, we're, uh, uh, one it, more, one more to bring it. Okay, he deliberately said it would be the last one to bring it full circle, and also we're running oh, late, really? and it's time to go to Diamond Time. Oh, wow. That's the part where we shout out your projects at DiamondClub.reddit.com because we are a community of people who do things, and we like to talk about the things that we did. Um, <laughs> I love how you just said very nice things about Doctor Strange, and somebody's like, "says the man drinking the guy's scotch." <laughs> hey uh, all right, I said shit so, before he gave me scotch. <laughs> if you uh, if you go on over to reddit.com slash r slash diamond club, uh, you'll see a sticky post where we can shout out your projects. And J F Dubo says. Today is Night Attack Day. Today is the release of the audio version of a book that Diamond Club helps support. Coincidence? I mean, probably, but it's pretty freaking rad. So if you haven't read about uh, read my book about robots, The Life Engineered, because you're more of an audio book kind of person, like me, he says, looking at you, Brian Brushwood, you are now out of excuses. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so excited. Uh, uh, need more convincing? This book is part of the Sword and Laser Collection. Dom and Veronica wouldn't steer you wrong, would they? Check it out at bit.ly slash Audio Robo or uh, whatever better yellow for 420 yellow swag type link the overlords of Diamond Club would prefer to use. Um, uh, no, that was a perfectly readable link. Thanks and love to you guys. Star Grove. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Star also, Grove. Neshcom says. Uh, hey, hey, we're doing great on Diamond Club uh, submission, <laughs> Diamond Time submissions tonight. Uh, but uh, what do you say we get a couple other plugs? In fact, let me plug my cool free music playlist project, uh, that sounds dot cool. I find lots of awesome music and I'm releasing playlists monthly of new stuff that we can discover together. It's totally free, made for Spotify and Apple Music. And you can get it directly in your email. Dive into those playlists that are already out at thatsounds.cool. New playlist coming this week featuring the XX. Say that name. The XX? No, the other one. Oh, Anamanaguchi. Yeah. And dive into <laughs> PC music. Uh, um, you can get it at yolo420.com slash soundswag. Although that sounds longer. not cool. It's probably an easy <laughs> enough name. Thank you, Carl. Hello, Diamond Cl- Clubs. Or Diamond Club says Tom M. Harden. Want to spread the word about a website a few of my friends and I made? Ratingmedia.com. We have news, podcasts, and Twitch streams. And give away Steam games every day. We are always looking to get a l- more like-minded people on the stream. So I wanted to reach out to Diamond Club. So check out Rating Media. Sorry, Ranting, ranting Media. Ranting. Forget I ever said anything. Rantingmedia.com or twitch.tv slash rantingmedia. Uh, uh, of course, if you want your project shattered out, head on over to uh, reddit.com slash r slash diamond club and go to the sticky post at the top where you can shout out your project. We read three of them every single episode, which brings us, Brian, to the Movie Draft Minute. Welcome to Movie Draft Minute presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of January 23rd, 2017. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. 
Welcome, folks, to the week of Brian. Did it help his bottom line? You know what? Let's just skip all the preamble and go find out. Mikey Newman's in sixth place, $139 million. Poor fucker. Chrissy Gates is in fifth place with $290.4 million. Milongo AE is in fourth place with $386.1 million. Josh Robion's in third place with $395.6 million. Brian Brushwood's in second place with the founder bringing in $3.4 million a week. And Triple X, the return of Xander Cage, bringing in $20.1 million a week, bringing his total to $452.2 million. And in first place, with a whopping $664.7 million, it's Team DTNS. And that is your Mudra Minute for the week of January 23rd, 2017. Dude. I can't believe you guys haven't had me on this game in forever. I'm so good at this game. I, 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 <laughs> I'm so good at this game. Like, like I'm, I'm an insider, guys. I don't know understand. I don't understand why you haven't had me on the. Uh, uh, no, on no, no, no. Yeah, uh, we'll, oh, we'll have you back, man. Actually, you're on the short list uh, for us to call. But I'm announcing it, and calling it right now. Of new sixth place people. Uh, <laughs> truth, truth be told, those of you who have not been around forever to get that joke, I am terrible. You're at very my, bad in the game. I couldn't even call my own movie. I was like, we're yeah. I don't know. Like 40 million? 40 mil? Is that good? (laughs) No, but I I thought our our weekend, like many people, I underpredicted and and was like, oh, holy shit, you guys really dug the movie and the movie had legs and wow. Like, I couldn't even guess my own movie. I can't guess anyone else's either. I'm terrible at this game. Dude, I'm calling it. I won this thing and it's all because of one trailer that dropped this week. That Logan trailer? Oh, that it, shit's over. Oh. You, you are, I've you seen are, 40 minutes of Logan. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, do tell. Oh, it was at Buttonumathon. It was right? at Buttonumathon. Yeah. Holy shit, guys. Right, right. Like, it's, you have, you guys have no idea. Like, this is Deadpool all over again, in right. a way. Like, literally, the first few minutes, our Logan is a limo driver. He's on the outs. Almost all the mutants are dead. And a bunch of people pull him over to jack his limo. And claws go through a head. And you're like... Oh shit! This movie. When they said this was rated R, yeah, this is the movie we've been wanting since the '80s, right? Yeah. And that movie never lets up, dude. So okay, so I've I've I, I talked about this on Cord Killers, uh, but uh, it's going to make all the money because number one, it's the closest we'll ever get to a Last of Us movie. It's the end of an X Men era. Not, that's not a reason why people go. To, that's why you go to movies. All right, all right, okay, it was, no, no, no. If you have played The Last of Us and you understand the quality of it, then you understand there's a reason that it kept winning Game of the Year, and this is a movie sure. incarnation of that. Uh, it's it's the end of an X Men era. Uh, it's the last time we're going to see uh, uh, Hugh Jackman play Logan. Uh, Doubtful. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. No, when this makes the- money. theoretically, theoretically. Well, but, no, 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 no. Now, now, when he, if he's allowed to wear a shirt and he doesn't have to go on HGH for the six. Months, that's true then it's a lot easier for him to play dude, logan dude it's I'm, also the first movie that feels like a real x-men movie that 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 we've seen yet that like the comic book oh no it is like this is the x-men movie we've been ma- waiting for right like, it is it is like it is hardcore it does not let up it is it is timely as hell like there's a moment in the very beginning of the movie where he's driving he's in the southwest and he's driving along this big inexplicable wall and it is just the, the movie is very much about how this country is feeling right now in a way that it wasn't made to be i, I um I, and I, and and when you watch Wolverine and X-23 fighting Reavers together, anyone who grew up on the comic, holy fuck. You're just like, seriously, I just kept I, I was sitting next to between my wife and, and Scott Derrickson. And I just kept looking over at both of them. And we were all just like giddy, like kids. It was unreal. And I, then when the 40 minutes was over, the audience was on their fucking feet. And we were just like, holy shit. I, I have I have no doubt that this is going to be. I think fairly easily the best Wolverine solo movie. I have no doubt that it's going to be among the best X-Men movies, right? I have no doubt that it's going to be among the best superhero movies. Here's what I doubt. I doubt the earning power of it just because the predictive power of superhero films are about the films that came before it, not necessarily how, how good it is. Like, I think it'll have legs. I don't think it'll have explosive week one earning power. If I remember correctly, when I was on the show six or seven years ago, were you the guy that made the big deal about how big Green Lantern was going to be? No. I did not make a big deal about Green Lantern. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> oh wait, but, yeah. Oh wait, yeah. was it you? No, 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 no. Because no. that, that was DC, and I, I don't speak DC very well. I'm just uh, curious. I'm no, 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 no. That that is not a thing that I would. Do. I mean, like, unless somebody can find it, please bring bring me oh me it's saying gonna, it's that, gonna that be, Green it's Lantern. Gonna, watch, they're gonna bring it back. It's gonna be like, you. <laughs> it's like I heard. 
word. That Green Lantern was actually pretty good. Like that's what it's gonna end up being. Gonna... Ryan told me this was the best movie he'd ever do. <laughs> and I, I turn and I say, up. "It's all Scotch, true, isn't it? Why do you do this? It's all true. It's all true, isn't it? Scotch. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I, and 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 here's here's my point is that if I think Logan has the potential, as you stated, for it to resonate something outside of the superhero bubble, because I don't care if you know who Wolverine is or not. I watch that and burst into tears thinking that's what a man looks like when he takes care of his daughter, right? That's going to be oh, what, like, right? I mean, that's, that I, I, is... I, I, again, I think it'll be good. I just don't think it would be as good as if a the previous Wolverine movie had been better than let it me, was. Let me just kind of lay this out. You have grabbed the thread of what this movie is. It's not just a guy taking care of his daughter who's not his daughter. Right, right. It's also a guy... Taking care of his dying dad. Right. Oh, when, well, and, and yeah. that that is the part dad, that that like also that is, like that that oh. that trailer leans so heavily on so the reminder. Okay, keep in mind that the guy who directed this is the guy who made Three Ten to Yuma. Keep that in yeah. mind. Oh, like every, so good. People are going to point out he directed the previous Wolverine movie that the studio got involved with. This is the one where the studio said, "Okay, we clearly don't get this. We let a bunch of guys run off with sixty million dollars, and they made one of the biggest." Um, non-Marvel Marvel Marvel, uh, hits in history. So why don't we just kind of let you guys make the movie you guys want to make and see if that works. Well, And that that was the big fear. Was was that they were just going to go back and be like, can we edit in some F-bombs and more gore? Like like Walking Dead style. Oh, dude, seriously. Like this movie, like... You are like it kind of sounds like Little Miss Sunshine when you put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I cannot. I cannot vouch for the last two thirds of this movie. I cannot because I've been in this situation before. Yeah, I've been in this situation where we they showed us the first thirty five minutes of Cowboys and Aliens, and we were like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Whoopsie!" Uh, so <laughs> that one went off the rails. So I cannot. But what I can say is, and, and by the way, in in the in the. Atmospheres that Uh-oh. they screen that forty minutes. Hey, God, real quick. That's among the most like we <laughs> want this to be good atmospheres. Except it's also the most critical when it comes to superheroes. Hey guys, like uh, this- breaking news: M Beam just linking us to the results of the summer movie draft in which Cargo oh! took Green Lantern <laughs> for thirty million dollars. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I had a feeling when it came out of my mouth, it was me. Shit. Shit. Hey, it was you. This is how it good I am at this game. Us. I told you I'm good at this game. Hey, spe- <laughs> speaking of which. Uh... Time will tell on that, my friend. Time will tell. I mean, listen. The, oh, the... I love your fans so much. The laughs... Jesus Christ. That was seven years ago. Yeah, well, and as The laughs you... about Green Lantern in Deadpool were among the biggest. Oh, so, yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, eventually, it paid off. It did. That... Hey, can, oh. can we take a moment? The reason that we know this is because of something called the DC TV Pedia. <laughs> Hashtag boiled. Uh, the uh, DCTVpedia.com uh, was started by Patrick Delahanty back in the day. It was called the BBpedia. It became DCTVpedia. Uh, and our all stars, among our all stars of editors, of, of course, Gatorwag and, and 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 a million unnamed people that, that I can't remember. But recently, one of our all stars, Leon, announced that uh, that it was starting to feel like work for him. He was taking point. Well, no, on- well, he he was doing our episode notes, and, and and that would be able to wholesale kind of like like. Fold into DC TV, uh, and, and also he edited a, a ton of stuff there. Uh, sure, so but Le- the, Leon. The, the point is, he wanted to take a step back. And yes. the question I am asking in the audience is, who among you would like to stand up and fill uh, the the uh, Leon sized hole in our hearts right now? Uh, and if we can just give him, we've a, a, already a, a, had people step up. Oh well, well, good. So, so it's already done. Okay, who among you will well, then, applaud then, then, now the l- illustrious career of Leon and his note taking? Uh, uh, one of the. An amazing. Oh, so, somebody said, just rewatch. Curio basically bought Green Lantern for Ryan Reynolds. That's amazing. Boy, was I wrong <laughs> and right at the same time. Like, who would know that it was just, you know, Oh, six my years God, you just tried to bury me with that. You literally I just did. tried to why, bury which me. Which is why I fucking own it, man. I owned it. I, it's on me. I'm not like, I don't remember that. No, fuck you. No, I was like, let's go to them because they'll remember. They're me top me off because, God damn it, I love you guys and I love you guys. And uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, so, 
Literally, I can't like, believe that. You that do is. realize the only reason I'm not on the show more often is because you don't text me and say, hey, man, you want to be all on right, the show. All right, all well, right. I'll definitely fix that. Uh, in the meantime, what do you, what do you got to plug? Uh, any projects that uh, have made millions yeah, of dollars? Yeah, what's, 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 what's next nominated? for C. Robert Cargill? Well, what's next? I mean, well, you're talking about the fact that here coming up shortly, I'm sure Doctor Strange is going to be available on DVD and VOD, of which uh, 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 I will see a cut, I'm sure. I think that's how this, this game works. Uh, but no, coming up in the future... I've got uh, I've got a couple of things. I've got actually a lot of irons in the fire right now. I've got a bunch of projects moving forward. A lot I can't talk about. What I can talk about is that later this year I've got a, a new novel coming out. Okay, uh, it's called Sea of Rust. Um, is that in the same world that you? Sorry, that you... breaking news: Cargill beat Justin and Jason in that draft. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just mentioned Sinister Three: The Search for More Money. Um, <laughs> No. Um, uh, oh no, no. So, so the novel, no. of course, you wrote uh, Dreams and Shadows and Queen of the this Dark. This is things. totally different. This new, is a standalone, new universe. New standalone universe. science yeah. fiction. Uh, it is. Uh, it's uh, a novel about. It takes place thirty years after the robots have completely wiped out humanity, and it's all about the shit that the robots have to deal with after we're gone. And there is no batch of humanity that the robots have to protect. It's, it's just humanity's children being being growing up, basically. Yeah, they're, it's, yeah. It, and they're they're dealing with their own shit, and uh, um, uh, it uh, a lot of my friends, uh, Murphy included, think it's the best thing I've ever written. I'm really super proud of it. I'm finishing up the edit right now, and that gets uh, published by Harper Voyager later this year. Uh, I'm also working on a, uh, a film. I've talked about a couple of places, so I can mention it here. Uh, I'm working on a, uh, uh, a biopic about uh, Ted Bundy. Um, wow. It's the la- we have the life rights to um, a guy named Bill Hagmeyer, who was the FBI agent who became Ted Bundy's best friend. And uh, it's all about the last week of Ted Bundy's life. It's, really? It's yeah. It's literally about how Bill Hagmeyer and Ted Bundy uh, got to know each other and become friends. And Bill Hagmeyer was there for all of Ted Bundy's finagling at the end of his life and everything he did to try to save him, himself from the electric chair. Wow. And it is heavy stuff. It involved digging through stuff that took me to a dark place. But it's one of those scripts that I'm super proud of, and I'm like, I can't wait to see this movie. Dude, see you know, you know my 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 mom was a student at Florida State. When he was killing oh, people. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's that was that, like, was, that, that period is like the the stuff. There's a lot of stuff like even stuff that you can't fit it all into a script. Like yeah. that, so the script is literally just about that the pro these two guys. It's two guys in a room essentially. But yeah, no, like the crazy stuff, like the fact that Ted Bundy got pulled over for uh, 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 a a traffic infraction and because he didn't have a driver's license they put him in jail for the weekend waiting yep. for the judge and while he was sitting in jail over the weekend he's like guys no it's that's me on the wanted poster I'm Ted Bundy and they're like fuck you yeah. you're not Ted wow. Bundy and he's like guys no look I'm I'm Ted Bundy you guys you guys you ha- got me you got me and they're you like won. no <laughs> and like literally it had, took him getting one of the guys to come over with the wanted poster until he's like Oh, holy shit, Joe! I, I think we got Ted Bundy. I think Bundy. he's actually Ted um, fucking Bundy. And, like it, they already had it. Like, <laughs> and then this... yeah, smash cut to this other guy. He's like, I don't know. I'm looking at an ID that says Ted Bundy here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hey, hey, nice try, hey, Jay. Hey. This, this seems like a really elaborate prank. No, that whole story is kind of fucking nuts. Smash cut to they're all gathered around the cell. They're like, say something only Ted Bundy would know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But but yeah no so the the script is actually speak I'm segueing from that because quite literally um, the script is based off unreleased FBI transcripts and recordings oh, wow. like I had stuff that has not been released to the public that was like holy shit like there's only like only people within the FBI have ever like sit and have and have heard that have heard, listened to this and and so it's I'm I'm super proud of that script and we're moving forward on that. Guy right holds wandering poster record scratch. Yep, yep. that's, that's me. me. <laughs> You're I got here. <laughs> That's the opening of the script. <laughs> little, uh, little Teddy Bundy in theaters yeah. this summer. Dude, by the way, also, the reason why that movie is going to get made and be gigantic is because those are acting roles like that people will stab each other for, right? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, being where we are in production, I will keep my fingers crossed rather than bragging. I yeah. hope yeah. I hope that the script is strong enough to attract the kind of talent that I feel this story deserves. If it's if it's if it's two people talking for the majority of the movie with that kind of story, you guys are going to well, do it. Well, hopefully to give a little historical context, Bill Hagmeyer talking to Ted Bundy and with the relationship he had when uh, Jonathan Demme was making uh, Silence of the Lambs, yeah. Jodie Foster was on set and they were on set at Quantico and she goes, 
I know the guy, my my role is based on works here. Can I meet him? And yeah. so Jodie Foster and Bill Hagmeyer sat out on the steps of Quantico to talk about how she should play uh, Clarice Starr. Because that was all very right. obvious. Hey, 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 Buffalo, hey, hey. Buffalo Bill based on Let's Let's yeah. dive into all this stuff. Let's go into post-show where we can get nice and loose and super, all super right. drunk. Yeah, let's do that. So in the meantime, uh, 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 Hey, Leaping Star Lizard, Grove. Leaping Lizard, Leaping Lizard. Uh, this Thursday, live show at PAX. If you are going to PAX South and you are getting in on Thursday or you live local to Texas, then please make your way on out. It is going to be a super fun time. Hopefully some super fun guests. Otherwise, at Justin R. Young everywhere. Uh, send me a Snapchat oh, right we got, now. We've got, you know what? We're going to break down the video of the Green Lantern auction. Uh, let's wrap things up. <laughs> Thank you guys. We love you guys. We will see you this Thursday at the Leaping Lizard. Yeah. Uh, until then. We're going to look so young. Live see you forever. next Thursday. Attack is done. My Love you, Mike, heart has been broken. The depression's just begun. Brian Brushwood, every time you leave, I wanna hurt myself by pissing off some bees. I'm allergic to bees. Oh, Justin Robert Young. Every time you go, I get so sad that I want to drink a warm glass of Drano. Night attack, night attack, night attack, night attack, night attack, night attack. Night attack. Night attack. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>